Well, hello and welcome to the Leverage Through Podcast, where we talk about high performers and pull out three different things that you can use in your daily life to get better at your business, to get better at your personal life, any different aspects of your life. I'm Craig Shoemaker, and today's guest is Pranav Gajria. He's a medical doctor by day and a writer by night. He's all about diving into the creator economy, building online businesses, and doing self-improvement types of content. Now, you're going to want to make sure to follow him on Twitter where he's the first reporter. That's the the number one ST reporter to get all of his great insights. Pranav, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was a lovely introduction. <laughs> it's, a, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, yeah, I'm excited. Uh, let's chat. <laughs> Well, you're welcome. And and I'm super glad to have this conversation with you because one of the things that I don't often see are people who have such a varied background and seem to be doing an incredible job at both. So I, from what I understand, like you're actually a medical doctor and now you're looking at writing and the creator economy and things of that nature. I can only imagine what that transition must be like. Like, <laughs> tell me a little bit about your story. Yeah, I mean, um, for... Well, it, I could go on about this for hours, but I'm going to simplify it for you. Um, I have always had like a, I would say almost like, um, let's say a burning desire almost to be a content creator, but I never understood in like what form or like how that would manifest. Um, to take you back a bit, I had uh, the idea or the vision of uh, starting out a YouTube channel and with that in mind, I created the username, The First Reporter. Um, and this was back when I was about 12 to 13 years old. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, long ago. I was, that was like 11 or so years ago now. And for several different reasons, mostly me like, you know, not having the confidence and not having like the right idea or the right uh, strategy in place, I just never manifested. Um, and one day turned into one week, one week turned into a year. And turns out by the end of, uh, towards the end of med school, I realized that, Hey, you know what? Like I've always wanted to do this. Um, I'm approaching my final year of med school. Um, I know that, you know, medicine is something that's always been close to my heart and I'm going to do whatever it takes to graduate med school. Um, but I also want to do something different. I want to, um, I wouldn't say break boundaries because there are a lot of creators and like people in general who are diversifying their like nine to fives with being a creator. But at the same time, I wanted to almost like challenge myself and do things that I know not a lot of people are doing. And that of course is being a creator. So for me, I kind of just had this like moment where everything clicked around about last year where I thought to myself that, okay, now is the time to like take action. Um, no more excuses. I'm just going to pick one thing and I'm going to go at it. Like, uh, not just hundred percent, but 200%. Like, you know, that's, that's the mentality I went in with. Um, I chose Twitter as the platform. I, because for a few reasons we could dive into that as well, but I chose Twitter as the platform to get started. Um, I focus on writing and audience building and, you know, developing the first reporter uh, as a brand. And lo and behold, one year later, I'm on your podcast. <laughs> so, <laughs> here, so here we are. <laughs> building a business is tough and even tougher when you do it alone. So why not use proven systems to help grow your business and focus your message? Now, Dan Co is the creator's creator. His system found in the two hour writer helps you cultivate your best ideas and the Modern Mastery community is there to challenge and support your growth every step of the way. I'm there, and you should be too. So go to leverage3podcast.com slash co, that's K-O-E, and let's get you going. Well, and, and, and I think, you know, the, there's, there's a community of people who are, are teaching about topics that are, are in your swim lane. Mm -hmm. So talking about uh, copywriting, talking about personal development, things of this nature. But I think one of the first tweet threads that I noticed from you was the one that you put out about focus. Mm. And the thing that it did for me was it had a ridiculous amount of practical advice and uh, tactics that maybe I'd heard before, but the way that you wove them together was, was really refreshing and really actionable. And so I guess what I'm curious is, 
Like in this sea of messaging, how do you differentiate yourself? Yeah, that's a fantastic question. Um, it's actually crazy because that focus thread not only was like my most recent thread, but it was also the one that took the most time. Uh, it, it was almost grueling to write that because I was almost uh, combining all of these like notes that I had from different books and articles and uh, just putting it together into one concise format that not only is readable, digestible, but it's also very actionable and practical for the reader because um, I think there's nothing worse than just, you know, regurgitating the same information that you see on Twitter uh, time and time again. And it's very easy to do that, right? Like you're seeing something that works and you can just, you know, copy paste it and just put it in your own words and get it out there. But I think for me from day one, my focus has always been around creating not only um, actionable content that gets my audience from point A to point B, uh, also learning something really valuable and then teaching it to my audience in my own words, in my own terms. And the last thing is also, um, this is probably the hardest part, but it's putting it together in specifically threads. That's what I was focused on a lot. Um, putting it together in threads because that is a format that very few people understand like the ins and outs of. It's like a lot harder to write a thread than it is to write a blog post. And if you can con consolidate your information in like, you know, the essence or like in its simplest terms, which is what a writing a thread is all about, then you know you've understood the topic and you're like in a position to teach it to others as well. So okay. those three combined is, uh, has been like my strategy and my system for the last year or so. So it's easy to say that you want to differentiate, mm -hmm. but it's, it's harder to actually execute. Yeah. <laughs> how do you do, <laughs> how do you actually make that happen? Yeah. I mean, um, it's, uh, it's tough because this is like a constant cycle of trying new things, iterating and repeating and doubling down and finding what works. Um, mm -hmm. And none of that I think will happen in the first place unless you actually are creating content and once you're actually publishing stuff in the first place. Because um, it's very easy to like, oh, you know, like pick on specific topics or pick on specific tweets and threads and be like, I wish I did that differently or I wish I, you know, repurposed this or did certain things differently. But think about like how much body of work have you put in, in the first place. So if you've put together, let's say 50 tweets or 50 threads, um, well, 50 tweets is obviously too little for anyone because, you know, this is just like a, a very bare minimum amount, I would say, but something like 50 threads, uh, that gives you a lot of room to analyze, not just like how your audience perceives what it is that you write, but you also get a lot of feedback from your audience. Like, Hey, I like this thread a lot because of X, Y, Z, or I really like this tweet because of X, Y, Z. And I make it a habit and it's almost a knowing habit for my friends to like get feedback, like with everything <laughs> that I put out. And I, and I always like, um, almost, uh, embrace criticism in a way that not a lot of people do. I want people to almost like critique my stuff more than I want them to just uh, give compliments and stuff. So this gives me an insight as to how I can make my content better. How can it stand out? Um, and I guess one more thing is, uh, I'm a little bit of a perfectionist. Like if I see, you know, like there's, there's a grammatical error, or if I see that there's no, like, like full stop at the end of a sentence, then this is going to like make my brain go all, all haywire. <laughs> so all that combined, it makes it a little easier to stand out, I guess. So perfectionism sometimes can be a monster we have to grapple with. Uh -huh. So how, how do you find the, the balance between saying, you know what, I got to get this thing out. I need to get that feedback versus I don't want to do something unless it's high enough quality that people are going to be rewarded for the attention they give me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, um, yeah, that's actually another good question because... The best way I think is to set a commitment to yourself as to what's possible for you. And for me, this has changed over the past year, but 
at the start, it was putting out at least one tweet a day, which I think of as like a daily dispatch. And no matter what happens, if I'm sick or I'm having a bad day or whatever, I will make sure that at least one thing goes out from my account. So that not only is like good for feedback, it's good to like build your audience or like get an understanding of what people want to see. But it, it's what content creation is all about. You have to create content. You can't think about creating content all the time because that's not going to get you results. It's about putting in the work, um, learning a new skill, possibly simplifying a problem that you had previously, and then you know explaining it in a way that might help someone else. So number one, have a daily like target, have a daily highlight almost. And then another good thing that uh, would be valuable is to set deadlines. Because I struggle with um, uh, posting long form content more than I do with short form content. So something that I do is I give myself a day or, or a specific time of the week where I know that this thread or this uh, article has to go out by this specific time. So that way, um, I know that it doesn't matter how much time I've given myself, it has to be out on this specific day. And sure, this works like most of times, but sometimes obviously um, it's a, it can be a bit of a struggle, but I can say that uh, having that like time restriction is a really good way to kind of just put that piece of content out there and really helps for sure. That's awesome. So, okay. So let, let's try to get real, real deep into the, the, the daily stuff of what you do. Mm -hmm. So maybe, maybe it's a week scope, maybe it's a day scope, but like, what's the day in the life for you as, so we'll put it in the context of this focus tweet that you, the thread that you put mm -hmm. out. Uh, you know, got a lot of attention, a lot of retweets, likes, and all that fun stuff. Hopefully, you got a lot of engagement. Oh, yeah. You said it, it was a lot of work in order to to do that research, but like in practical terms, what were the steps that you went through in order to make that happen? <laughs> okay, this is cool because uh, I actually for this thread again, I had the same process. I had a deadline on, I believe it was last Tuesday or Wednesday, if I'm not mistaken, and. That was, uh, unfortunately for me, the same day I was traveling uh, on a bus from the south of Sweden <laughs> to the north of Sweden. That's when you are going to Sweden? Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, so um, this was obviously <laughs> a bit of a challenge because I had most of the research done, but I didn't have the thread out there like um, the way I wanted it. So there was a lot of okay. uh, tweaks, a lot of edits, there was a lot of... Um, uh, work on the hook, which I feel is sometimes the most important part of the thread. Even if the body is like not so great, if your hook is like terrible, then no one's going to read gotta it. Get them to click exactly, on it. Exactly. Exactly. So yeah. you got to make it, um, attractive to your reader. And that's something that I, uh, I've realized a lot of like over the past few, past few months. But, uh, for that, uh, process, I was on a bus ride, um, for about four hours and Prior to the res uh, after the research was done, I spent the entire bus ride, you know, on my Mac, just typing away, making specific edits, consolidating it, the information in a way that takes the reader like step by step, as well as giving them like practical advice on how to apply those steps. Not just saying, "Hey, like if you wanna uh, if you wanna learn how to focus." Um, you listen to binaural beats or set like, you know, deadlines or set a timer. Like, no, I give people almost a bulletproof way as to how I would implement things. And by doing that, not only is it more ap applicable and practical for the reader, but it also is received well by the reader because not a lot of people can do that and will take the effort in doing that. And no one would want to write a thread for four hours on a bus. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. So, so you're, you're on the bus this week, mm -hmm. which I'm sure all of us wish uh, we could add that line to, uh, to our, our day in the life. <laughs> um, you're, you're, you're crafting the tweet. How, how do you know when it's done? Like, do you, do you have people that you run it by? Mm -hmm. uh, what's your process? Yeah. Another great question. Uh, Okay, so I always, uh, for me, the process starts with the hook. If I have a good hook in place, 
Uh, and for those who, th who are wondering what the hook is, it's basically just the first tweet of your thread. And this is the first thing that people will see and probably the only thing most people will see when a tweet comes past the timeline. Um, so my whole process starts once I have a hook ready and it doesn't have to be perfect because, um, you'll never be satisfied with the first variant of your hook. It's, I've never had the first hook that I've written as the end result of what I published. Um, but that's what guides me. And I use that to almost then, um, build a mind map. I find this works excellently, um, mind map into different directions as to what I aim to, um, uh, do with this thread, what my goal is uh, from the reader's perspective, what's the central emotion that I want to bring, do I want to educate, do I want to entertain, do I want to make them go like, you know, jump off their seat, do I want to make them cry, like what's the central emotion that I want to uh, give to my reader. And once I have that in place and once I have like my notes, my ideas, my own perspectives or my own experience, then I construct it in a way where it's not just value after value after value, but it's value. Why is it valuable and how can you apply it in, in like different orders? It could be one by one, or it could be like split in different parts. Um, and I think, uh, in terms of the question itself, um, I know when it's done, I feel when I've read it, um, about two times in out loud. And then I know that I've caught any like mistakes, any type of, uh, things that I might've missed in the first place. And then when I feel, okay, this is ready. It has everything in place. Then I'm all right, I'm done. I hit publish and that's it. Then it's up to the Twitter gods to decide what happens. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cross your fingers. That there's a retweet. In oh there. yeah. That would be great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that thank you for that sure. um I, I really like how you pulled out being able to rotate between pinpointing the value proposition the why so describing why it's important and then the ever important part of it is how yeah. right mm -hmm. if we can if we create this desire for someone and uh, we convince them it's important to do and then leave it on the table of how to even go about it. That's uh, it's a letdown. So I, I definitely see that in, in the way that you structure your content. Appreciate that. That's a picture of when everything goes right. So I can only imagine that there's been times when you're, you're staring at the screen, you're trying to come up with an idea and it just doesn't come. So I'm really curious, kind of in this vein of, of being authentic, of being you know, having your own voice and trying to differentiate from the crowd. I know it can't be easy. So what do you do when, when you have that writer's block or those obstacles you face? Yeah. I mean, um, this is something that I feel everyone faces no matter what stage of your career journey you're at. Um, I've spoken to a lot of like experienced established creators as well. And, uh, trust me, they feel it just as much as I do. So, I think a good way, um, to combat this, and I'll also give you an example. Um, so when it comes time for me, at least with newsletters, it's something I really struggle with, uh, because when I, I feel like for me, uh, the more content I read, I need to write, for example, like from when I go from tweets to threads to newsletters, the more of, I would say, um, uh, the greater the expectations I would say I, I place upon myself. And this is just possibly a mental thing, but it's something that I'm still working on. So when it comes time to putting out the newsletter, I always have uh, a blank screen in front of me and I'm not sure what, what direction to go with because I'm like, I can talk about so much. I can write about so much. There's no <laughs> limits. Like, <Right. laughs> like where do I go? <laughs> so, uh, this is obviously, uh, something I'm still like working on and still struggling with, but something that I've found, um, that helps is number one, having a database, uh, to consolidate and collect the ideas, uh, that you're like coming across on a daily basis. Um, and there's two ways I think that really work for this is, uh, first one being an idea generation system. And the second one 
um, is a tie-in between a storytelling or a journaling system. So the idea generation system is pretty simple. It's basically a way to capture your notes, uh, capture the things that you're reading from like articles, newsletters, books, podcasts, and having them all into like one central system. Uh, the one that I use is Notion. And my system is not perfect by any means. It's just like just consolidating my own thoughts from that specific moment and then just making sure they're on the somewhere where I can like capture them back when I need to. And the second one is the journaling slash storytelling method because uh, this is important um, on multiple different levels. You can capture like the best ideas in the world from the best books and the best resources. But if you don't have your own story or your own experiences from a specific day or a specific point of your life involved with this, um, then you've kind of missed the point and you probably even dropped the ball with your content. So you have to kind of find a way to journal, whether it's on your phone, whether it's like an A6 like notebook, which I strongly recommend. Um, have a system to capture your own thoughts and have a system to capture the ideas and thoughts of other people as well and use that to um, build a foundation uh, of your content when it comes to writer's block or creating anything really. That's awesome. And I, I really like how you pull out the concept of being intentional about looking for experiences in your own life in order to be able to associate with the content that you consume. And, and I got to think that that's a big part of what helps give you that uniqueness and gives you that voice mm -hmm. that, that comes across. Absolutely. So when we're talking about Notion, you're throwing a whole bunch of stuff in there. I, I, do, you have, do you put stuff into a database type page and you have uh, tagging associated with it? Or what's sort of the technical and automation aspects that you, you use to, to give you an advantage? Okay, so... I um, am a bit of a productivity geek, if you would like to call it. <laughs> so I love like, you know, trying out different systems like Notion, Obsidian. Um, I've right, used yep. like each one of them and both of them I feel like are probably the staples right now. Um, but I've also used apps like Google Keep, Google Docs, um, to-do list apps like Clear and uh things three, like all of them kind of have their own role in the entire system. But for the most part, in terms of the capture system itself, um, I have a notion page or database that, um, number one is, uh, is how I scale or like plan out my content. So if I give an example, um, I had the idea of writing this, uh, focus thread but the only thing I had in mind was how to stay laser focused. That's it. That was the only prompt that I had kept for myself. And I tagged it as an idea. And to kind of put a deadline to it, I'd set Wednesday or Tuesday. Again, I'm not sure between the two, but I believe it was, I believe it was Wednesday. I believe it was Wednesday. So with that in place, um, I then looked through my own notes that I have collected from different books and different resources. Uh, so that is obviously, again, plugged into Notion from the topics that I normally write about, which is, again, um, self-improvement, the creator economy. And uh, now it's shifted from writing online to online business. So on each of those factors, I have notes that are kind of laid out in different levels. And then I think, okay, maybe this would be helpful. Maybe this would be insightful. Then I think, all right, what was my own perspective of this? What was my experience with this? What were some mistakes that I was making? And then I also have a look at um, some, for example, uh, some data points that people themselves are struggling with that I might not be struggling with. So Reddit forums, um, Ask the Public, uh, DMs, a lot of that combined. And uh, that in, itself, in essentially uh, is what makes up my capture system. So you've had all this activity and you, you, you've, you, your reach has grown a lot. Um, you know, I don't know how many tens of thousands of, of Twitter followers you have in the moment, but it, it's in that realm for sure. And I'm just curious, like from your perspective, what's the value of having reach? What's the value of being a creator? How does it, like, what's the tangible thing that it brings to you? 
Ooh, yeah, so this is a great question. Um, and some, probably one of the most uh, frequently asked questions as well, but I think it's important because um, I can give you kind of like a, um, a side-by-side comparison of my life from the past last year, 2021, where I was not a creator, a complete consumer. And now as a creator, as what I'm doing right now. So last year, I always had just the idea, the vision, and just, you know, um, everything that I needed to get started to actually put my ideas out there was honestly right in front of me. But what I lacked (laughs) was the execution. I lacked the implementation. um, And as a result, this kind of created this negative feedback loop as to, oh, I wish I was doing this or that could be me or, you know, I could be doing that, but way better. And that was something that was a a constant loop for quite a long time. And it wasn't until I realized that, okay, things have to change, uh, was when things actually started to change when I actually put in the work (laughs) coincidentally, who would have thought? (laughs) So once it, once I started taking that action and by taking action, it's, honestly just as simple as started out with uh, a tweet started out with one thread started out with one newsletter one space and those compiled from time to time um until it took me about like three months to get my first hundred followers and then another three months to get my first thousand and then it compiled like build and build and i started getting opportunities that i would have never gotten before for instance, uh, ghostwriting, um, coaching, consulting, um, all of the things that I thought or actually was in a position of learning from other people, I'm now in a position to teach and monetize by myself. Um, but I feel like that's just such a small part of the equation. It's more also uh, this aspect of building digital leverage. I like to think of this as having a... I like that word. Yeah, digital leverage, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's actually um, something that a lot of people haven't grasped yet. But if you think about it, like if you go to a job application or if you apply for a job, let's just say, um, in most cases, you will be asked like of some extracurriculars or something that you're doing differently or something that you're working on at the moment. And most people would leave that blank because they're not doing anything different aside from their specific profession, which is... Totally fine. But let's assume you have a profile that displays your work, that displays some level of expertise, something that you do, something that you teach other people. Um, Having that uh, is probably one of the biggest advantages you can have in this day and age of the information age, the digital era, whatever you want to call it. Um, This is probably one of the biggest things that's, uh, I think, had an impact on me because it's now opportunities that are coming my way rather than me being the one who is chasing opportunities mm. just by the basis of putting myself out there, creating content, and now getting other people to do the same thing. So it's the cycle, I see. And I'm glad you did because otherwise uh, we probably never would have met. So. <laughs> yeah, very so true. It's definitely a good thing. <laughs> one of many opportunities and it's, it's, it's awesome. I love seeing it. That's right. All right, so if we, if we want to kind of tie a bow on everything for our, our listeners and our, our viewers here, um, wh- what do you think would be like the three things out of all the stuff that we've talked about that maybe you can you know, s- leave people with to say, these are things that you can do coming away from the show? Yeah, absolutely. The first one would be make the switch from consumer to creator. <laughs> I think this is uh, the biggest takeaway for anyone listening because not only will this... Um, improve you from a professional perspective, but also from a personal perspective, you attract your audience, people who think like you, who share the same ideas. And there's nothing really more valuable than having that loyal fan base almost of people that really resonate and look forward to hearing what you have to like say. So make the switch from consumer to creator. Um, number two, it would be to, well, if, uh, if you are making a decision from consumer to creator, then I would strongly recommend write online and use a platform like Twitter to your advantage. Um, don't just follow like, you know, uh, sports and social media for like 
the <laughs> politics and the, the right. news and all that stuff, but use it from a perspective um, where you're in control of what you create. You're not just regurgitating the same information that other people have written. Uh, if you're on social media, try to find a balance between consumption and creation and mm. use that to almost build your brand, your voice, whether it's Craig, whether it's Pranav or whether it's uh, David, whoever it is, use your name, use your brand and find the things that interest you. Find what you love talking about. Like, it could be copywriting. It could be uh, online business. It could be web design. It doesn't matter. Find that thing that, you know, you... You search for hours on the net, late at night, just scrolling through, you know, YouTube, pick that topic and just start writing about it. Just put it into content, tweets, threads, whatever it is. And that's probably the biggest uh, thing that you can do. Uh, this is a great way to transition from consumer to creator, especially having platforms like Twitter and such. Um, yeah. And the last takeaway if you are struggling now that you're probably convinced <laughs> on writing online and switching from consumer to creator, and if you feel, oh, I don't have any ideas, I don't want to know what to write about, um, I think a great place to start is to first capture the things that you're consuming, um, pick out the things that resonate with you. It could be from a book, it could be a quote uh, from a podcast. Compile them, compile your own notes into a place where you can easily revisit like um, on a bus ride, maybe on a train. <laughs> well, ideally on a bus ride and then you'll be able to write a thread. <laughs> 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 but um, have a system where you're capturing things so you never have to start from a blank page. And yeah, uh, I think that's, that's probably the three main takeaways. And one more thing I would add, add on that. Bonus one, awesome. Yeah, yes. bonus one would be uh, push yourself outside of your comfort zone. This is probably the most important one because if you have a little square that, you know, you're constantly, all your activities and everything that you do is around this box, then you can't expect extraordinary results. Or you can't expect to be where you really want to be. So for instance, for me, it was facing imposter syndrome. I was never really a confident public speaker, like even being on a podcast, like right now, if you told me a year ago that I would be on a podcast like this, I would have looked like, no, 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 I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't matter who it is, but, um, it's, it's all right. Take, take risks, like push yourself outside of your comfort zone. Um, put your ideas out there and good things will happen. That's, uh, that's awesome. my summary. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Hey, thanks so much for being a part of the show today. Now, the worst thing we can do is let all this wisdom pass us by and not act on it. There's so much more to the show, but you'd be missing out if you don't subscribe to the newsletter. This is where you start to leverage these tactics that you've heard in the show in a very real way. So go to leverage3podcast.com and you can join right there on the homepage. Also, please feel free to reach out to me on Twitter where I'm at Craig Shoemaker. I'd love to hear from you. I hope you have a great day. Find someone to love, find someone to forgive and find someone to encourage today. Thanks again, and I'll see you here again soon on the Leverage 3 Podcast.